The following program is brought to you by Element 14, the electronics community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com slash presents. My name is DJ, you're watching Element 14 Presents, and this is the new Raspberry Pi 4. Now, I love it just the way it is, but it's a little exposed and not that useful like this. So how about I make it into a laptop? Amazing hacks. Inspired designs. Each week, Element 14 Presents brings you innovative projects using electronics, engineering, and more. All right, I hear you. I know that things like the Pi Top already exist, but that's just buying it and having it. That's no fun. This is all about making stuff, so I'm going to make stuff. I'm going to make my own version of a laptop, and it should cost a little bit less than the off-the-shelf versions. Now, in order to do that, I need to have a plan. So here's my plan. Step one, choose the parts. Now, the most important part is, of course, the Raspberry Pi 4 itself, or else it wouldn't be a Raspberry Pi 4 laptop. And because am I, am I, I am a Pi fanatic, I'm going to be using the official Raspberry Pi components. That means the official screen, the official keyboard, and the official camera, so that I've got a nice all-in-one platform I can use to develop whatever I want. Step two, power the darn thing. So if I want this to be an actual laptop, that means it should be truly portable. And if it's tethered, then it's just some sort of weird desktop hybrid that folds. In order to power it, I'm gonna be using this off-the-shelf power bank. I'm not gonna reinvent the wheel. This is as cheap and effective as it gets for portable power sources. So this will power the entire system via USB. Step three, the case. Now, of course, I need an enclosure for everything, and now that I know what parts I'm gonna use, that will determine the size constraints of the case for the laptop. And in order to do that, I need to use a CAD program because I'm gonna be 3D printing this. So why don't we jump over to Fusion 360 and I'll show you how I made the case. First things first, I need to start a new project, and I'm gonna go over here and import the Raspberry Pi model. And let me go over and draw a rectangular box to get the basic shape around the Raspberry Pi. All right, and then let me go over here. I'm gonna import this completed case design, and then I can just go ahead and delete that original rectangle, and we're done. So simple. Okay, so here are the final components. You can see the faceplate and all the other 3D printed pieces that I made, the snap together lower and upper assemblies, as well as the retainer for the LCD. I've got a slot for the power bank, and there's a cutout for the USB plug that the power bank will plug into. And at the base, I've got a cutout for your finger so you can pop the power bank out so you can recharge it. And I've got these caps so that the ends of the lower case are covered. And I've got these pegs uh, for the hinges. Uh, there's a little cutout for the wires to feed through, but other than that, the uh, upper assembly just hinges on that peg. And here's the connection for the lower shell with a cutout for the USB connection to the keyboard. And here's the upper shell that just snaps together with some vent holes, of course, so that this isn't entirely sealed. I might need to add a fan later. And there's also some mounting points, of course, for the faceplate. What you got under your hood? Spaghetti, mostly. Sweet! What is the typical power consumption of a MOSFET relay? You can't handle this power. What is the life expectancy of a MOSFET relay? You trying to sell me life insurance, buddy? No! 
For answers to these questions, zoom on over to Element 14 Tech Spotlights. Okay, so here we got the circuit. It's extremely simple. We just got the USB connection for the five volts and this goes to the speaker fat, which I should mention I'm using for audio output. Now this uses an I squared S uh, connection to the Pi for transferring the audio data. So that's what the blue wires are. Uh, we also need the I squared C connection uh, for controlling the audio chip. So that's got the green and yellow wires for clock and data and we'll also have the I squared C connection from the controller board for the display to the Pi as well as well as all the common 5 volts and grounds that we need. I'll just need to attach the camera via its own uh, flat connector and this is ready to go in the case. All right, it's ready to go. Got the power pack. I'm gonna just plug this in and we should be in business. Just give it a second. Oh, come on, come on. All right, that looks a little bit better. Oh, finally, finally. So of course I'm running Raspbian Buster that's the latest distro, and it's the only one that will work on the Raspberry Pi 4. So we'll just let this boot up, and I should be able to log in. Move that a little bit better. Pi. Oh no, my super secret password. Raspberry. Incorrect password. Raspberry. There we go. <laughs> Oh, I'm just bad at spelling. That's all that is. Okay, so the drivers are installed. Let's go ahead and test it out to see if the audio is working. Just go up there. That sounds like it's working to me. So just cancel that. All right. So audio is good. Now let's test out to see if the camera works too. All right. So let's test out the camera. Oh, come on. So I've spent a reasonable amount of time off camera trying to troubleshoot the Pi camera, and. After lots of updates and testing and troubleshooting, no go. Uh, this is still the Pi 4, it's still new hardware, and this is still a new distro, very fresh out the oven, so maybe something's still broken. I'll wait a month or two and see if my troubleshooting improves. But in the meantime, the screen works, the audio works, and I'm happy with the case. So this is a Pi 4 laptop, and I can use this to test and develop my other Raspberry Pi projects 
in a much more practical sense. Is it absolutely perfect? No. But it gets the job done for what I need to do. And since it's all 3D printed, I can easily modify things to add whatever parts or sensors I want. And if you want the case, of course, you can always download the files that we produce for our projects at element14.com forward slash presents. That's gonna do it for me today. Let us know what you think a Pi 4 laptop should have the Element 14 community. See you guys next time.